details being published on social media. Karima Brown is here with us. Um, previously, when we were spoken to you about the case, it's been over the telephone. Thank you so much for coming through this time. My pleasure. I thanks. suppose congratulations in order. Do you feel Thank that you. way? Um, yes, I feel relieved, um, particularly because the judge found that the EFF had actually violated the um, Electoral, Electoral Act code. and Code. Um, and so what it does is that it points to the EFF's hypocrisy about its supposed commitment to constitutionalism. It calls other people constitutional delinquents and yet it pledged to not intimidate journalists, to do everything in its power to actually protect us, to do our work freely and fairly during the election and of course um, they did the exact opposite. So I think for me today is a victory because it exposes the EFF's hypocrisy to its so-called commitment to constitutionalism. It uses the constitution when it wants to wage political wars against its opponents. It is not committed to constitutionalism um, as an ideal and I yep. think my case um, vindicates me on, on that because you can't participate in an election, pledge to uphold a, um, a code of conduct and then behave in the way that uh, Julius Malema did. Um, so for me it is um, a really important eye-opener for South Africans about the EFF's lack of commitment to constitutionalism as a principle and to the rule of law as a principle. We are referring to the contents of this case being the release of your personal details on social media uh, following what they deemed uh, to be an act of uh, resistance from your side when you sent out an instruction to your producers to say go cover a story in such a way. But this story, the, the fight between yourselves and uh, yourself and Julius Malema and the EFF goes back quite a while, especially uh, with the incidences with journalists from Tiso Black Star. Where does this all come from? Um, I'm not sure what you mean about Tiso Black Star because I didn't have a fight with Julius when Malema there. What happened was when Julius Malema and Floyd Chivambo were still in the ANC Youth League, they threatened to release the personal details of political journalists um, as a way to embarrass us. Uh, and what I did was gather political journalists and ask mm. the question, how does a political party access your personal uh, details without breaking the law? So we report them to their mother body and uh, they were made to apologize um, and subsequent to the EFF being formed yep. uh, I have uh, never actually had a fallout with the EFF I've discussed uh, their positions their strategies and the tactics but I don't know Julius Malema um, you know from a bar of soap uh, in a personal way so we have no personal history with each other the conversations that have been taking place about journalists at Tiso Black star and uh, the uh, occupation of the building that houses uh, the commission for inquiry and uh, why sometimes there's been questions around why is Karima Brown there um, are, are those non-issues I don't know what the EFF means. Why am I there? Um, I don't work for Tiso Blackstar. I work for ENCA. Um, and I go and cover the Zondo Commission of Inquiry that is there. Um, the problem with the EFF is that they refuse to accept that I'm a journalist. Yeah. They continue uh, to call me uh, an operative, a security operative, an ANC underground operative. And yet when I challenged them in court to bring the proof of that, they were unable to do so. Um, so again, they were found out lying, uh, just like they were found out lying about a whole range of other people. The EFF believes that if it has a press conference and it badmouths you that um, journalists who just act as stenographers and write what they say, that it means that it's the truth. But here we have a court of law yeah. that actually uh, vindicates uh, me. The EFF had ample opportunity to bring proof that I'm not a real journalist and it couldn't do so. Why? Why do you think you're targeted? I think I'm targeted because I refuse to submit 
to um, the fascism of the EFF, uh, the intimidation and the bullying uh, of the EFF, particularly um, its um, uh, bots on social media. Uh, and I question them like I question every other political party. I'm doing my job. Um, the EFF said uh, the normal rules of journalism doesn't apply to me because I'm not a journalist. And yet in a court of law, when they were asked to prove why they said that, they weren't able to have a case. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, my victory today is a victory for journalism in general and media freedom. Yeah. Um, it is also a victory uh, for women. Um, and um, the struggle against patriarchy and misogyny, but it's also a victory against toxic masculinity that is in the EFF, uh, the way it targets women journalists in particular. I'm not the first journalist that they've targeted. They've just recently um, said that they're going to go for the kill uh, when Pauli van Weyck wrote a story about yeah. how Julius Malema and Floyd Chivambu uh, directly benefited from uh, VBS. So I'm part of a group of people. In fact, my legal team's argument was that uh, what the EFF does is part of a pattern. We called it a hit and run strategy where they uh, basically order the uh, supporters to uh, target you, threaten, intimidate you uh, and then they issue a lame apology like Julius Malema did yeah. at the press conference and then still say in the same sentence, I'm an ANC agent and I'm an ANC operative and yet in a court of law when he had the opportunity to demonstrate what he's saying, um, he wasn't able to do so. You're talking about Polly van Weyck. What has happened today? How does that outcome impact the process that's also the parallel uh, process that's also been started by SANEF with the Equality Court with regards to the intimidation of journalists? Well, I think it strengthens, it strengthens the argument of SANEF um, because uh, essentially it undergirds what they are arguing. My, uh, the ruling that has been given undergirds the argument that SANEF is making that the EFF is targeting journalists and targeting female journalists in particular. Um, and the funny thing is Mr. Uh, Julius Malema still has not answered Pauli van Weyck and neither has Mr. Dalim Porfu. Um, he hasn't answered her on whether he was involved in uh, a transaction uh, about a sale of a house that um, was bought with the proceeds of uh, corrupt activity. So the EFF has a lot of questions to answer um, and we're going to keep on answering, ans asking those questions yeah. uh, no matter the um, threats to um, uh, intimidate us, to harass us, to silence us, uh, for people to launch sexual uh, um, attacks against us. I was threatened with rape, um, I was threatened with sexual abuse um, and violence and, um, and death. And death. And the EFF thought that we were going to go away. Um, we've got news for the EFF. We're not going to go away. We're going to continue doing our work. The court again today just reaffirmed our right to do our work as journalists. And I think for many people participating in the elections, uh, they need to le read the Electoral Act. It actually has a huge section on how women in particular should be treated. Uh, and then, of course, um, if you go through the judge's ruling, uh, you will see that she ruled that the EFF was in violation of quite a few of the uh, sections dealing with how to deal with uh, journalists and with women. I don't have a copy of the full judgment. Does that me. mean that the process will still be continued at the electoral court? Uh, no, the process is, as far as I'm concerned, the, the court gave me relief. I did go via the route of the IEC yeah. uh, because they were the instrument of the elections, uh, if you like. Uh, they decided to not take up the matter and um, I then um, consulted my legal team and our understanding of the law um, told us that the High Court has jurisdiction over this matter and that's what the judge also ruled on that the High Court did in fact have jurisdiction to rule on electoral uh, issues um, and issues affecting the Electoral Act because the EFF uh, argued that um, the High Court isn't the place uh, to do it and uh, today's ruling confirmed 
um, my legal team's understanding uh, of the law that was correct, that the High Court did in fact have jurisdiction. Let's just slightly go back again. You might be dealing with this as a journalist, but as an individual, you had to take decisions immediately after this incident happened. Did you reach out to the EFF uh, before you finally took the decision to approach the courts? Um, in my work, I reached out to the EFF every day to ask them for interviews and to ask them to respond to issues uh, regarding them in the media. Um, as it regards myself and the threats, I couldn't see that I should be reaching out to people who are threatening to um, rip the skin off my body and, yeah. um, you know, people who say I must be deported back to India. I didn't see the point of engaging the EFF. Uh, the EFF's position was very clear. It didn't uh, recognize me as a journalist. So I used uh, the uh, legal system. Um, in fact, I first used the system of the uh, Electoral uh, Commission, uh, which is the first place of call. So I went through the process quite systematically. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that I think um, was also uh, misrepresented, the EFF went around saying I'm trying to disenfranchise them. Uh, when I made representations to the uh, IEC, uh, I didn't prescribe what action they should take yeah. against the EFF. Um, there's a lot of actions that they could have taken, but they decided not to deal with the matter, which is their right um, as, as uh, an electoral body. And so I did the next best thing. I went to uh, a court of law and today um, I, I was vindicated. So today is a good day for media freedom. It's a good day for women journalists. Yeah. And it's a good day for democracy. As an individual journalist, it must be quite a thing to be accused by a political party of wanting to change the outcomes of an election. Um, you know, the problem with the EFF is that it speaks a lot and it says a lot, but it goes unchallenged. And because we report on what they say, there's an assumption that what they're saying is true. But our, our our job is to test whether what they say is true or not. So, for example, in the case of Trevor Manuel, they made a whole range of accusations, which the court and that just found was also against them. Uh, against yeah. them, they had no basis, in fact, for doing it. They're appealing the matter, but I'm not sure what the basis of the appeal is going to be. So, I think there is a responsibility uh, upon us as journalists to interrogate uh, the EFF and other political parties. Well, when recently, they the make Democratic Alliance issues. saying that your your grasp of political issues uh, needs to be questioned. Yeah, look, um, uh, uh, political parties like um, uh, making allegations against journalists and so on, but the truth of the matter is the DA couldn't explain the Patricia DeLong matter. Uh, it said it uh, fired her, but it never had a disciplinary process against her. Um, so I'm not surprised that the Democratic Alliance said that I don't have a grip on politics because um, they were caught out uh, in the act. Um, and then, of course, also they tried to suggest initially that there were problems at the election um, uh, voting stations, yeah. um, there were effectively five objections, which weren't even complaints. There were 22,000 voting stations. As it happens with television interviews, yeah. we need to wrap up. But quickly, what's the detail of today's ruling? The well, I haven't seen the actual um, uh, ruling itself. That is going to be emailed to me. Uh, but uh, from what I could gather, what the judge was saying was that the EFF is in violation of the Electoral Act and code, um, that the EFF uh, is slapped with a cost order, that they, they are officially yeah. warned, um, and um, you know, I, I won my case, but I will study the judgment once my lawyers have sent it to me. And you're unrelenting. Yes. Karima Brown, thank you so much for coming through to talk to Thank us. you for having Let's me. Let's now go back live to that inquiry on Adam.